The exploding caseload this time is traced to the morphing COVID variants, the Delta, the Gamma from Brazil, the Lambda from Peru, the B.1.621, that's from Colombia. And they are all fueled by unvaccinated people who then become the host for these viruses. The sequencing that identified some of those variants is done right here in South Florida at a lab at the University of Miami. And Dr. David Andrews runs that lab. He joins us now. Dr. Andrews, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Andrews, it's always great to have a scientist with us to help us figure out what's going on. So I, I actually can recite the Greek alphabet. We've got alpha, <laughs> beta, gamma. Uh, the Colombian variant doesn't have a Greek letter yet, uh, but that Delta variant right now is across the country, eight out of 10 cases. What is it about the difference in the Delta variant that you're finding that is so much worse? So before I describe the variants and get, and get into some of that information, I really want to make sure that everybody understands how multidisciplinary the project is that we're engaged in. We've been sequencing now since early, since mid or late January, but this is a, 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 a program that has been, again, involved many, uh, many, many individuals. The actual sequencing operation is in the cancer center at the University of Miami. They pivoted from their cancer uh, sequencing effort uh, to be able to accommodate the virus, which is a very different kind of sequencing. The bioinformatics is done at the Hussman's, Hussman Institute for Human Genomics, uh, and the early uh, characterization of the samples is in the Department of Pathology. And I really want to thank our partners at Jackson Health System for making this possible because a lot of the samples are coming from them. They're random samples that we're retrieving from patients who test positive. That's the background of what we are, what we are, um, what we are sampling right now. Now, if you want, I'll address the question, which is the hottest question right now that I, I'm getting a lot of inquiries about, is the B.1.621 variant, also called the Colombian variant. I want to let um, you know, doctor, we actually <laughs> learned of the Colombian variant and, and the little surge from the CEO of Jackson, Carlos Magoya, who is with us a few weeks ago. Uh, I just want to put on the record, we have calls from Colombian Americans who don't like that it's called the Colombian variant. Uh, <laughs> clearly, it's about origination and not about culture, but, uh, but that was surprising to us. So, so where so did that come from and, and what is that and what to expect? So I think I can clarify where we are uh, and what's happening. Uh, we, in our last sequencing run, and we group sequences by typically by weeks as we retreat, as we're sampling, as we receive samples, we did see a 10% prevalence in our sample of about 90 samples. We saw nine cases out of about 90 of the B.1.16, pardon me, 620. You see how hard it is to get this right, the B.1.621 variant, uh, which, which has been associated with Colombia, but let me say why it's been associated with Colombia. Um, but, and by the way, it's about the fourth most prevalent in the United States based on the, on the CDC data. It's roughly around 2% of variants I'm seeing uh, in the United States. Of course, uh, Delta is 80 or 90% right now nationally. Uh, in our last sampling, it was 63%. But here's what, what is, what's going on with the, B, with, with the B.1.621. Then we can speak about the social implications. Uh, right now in the country of Colombia, this is uh, a very prevalent variant. It's uh, in, in one of the, the, the many online resources, it's upwards of 30% of variants there. Here, it's very little. And worldwide, it's 0.5%. The United States, a couple of percent. So it is, it is prevalent there. It did not originate in Colombia. But I want to say to Colombia's credit, a beautiful, a beautiful article appeared in May uh, describing it, uh, the article came out of the the genomics group of emerging emerge, a very sophisticated article a, a genomic group of emerging microorganisms in the department of, of uh, in the national institutes of health in bogota and colombia a beautiful article was published that characterized this lineage in great detail uh, and 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 all colombian authors uh, so that article has been read, read widely throughout the world now it's not a uniquely Colombian variant. It was, didn't actually originate in Colombia. It's pre present now in many different countries. But I have to, I, I must say, and so it's wrong for us to be referring to it as the Colombian variant, which is why uh, we've moved away uh, from a, a, a geographic uh, 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 designations for these variants to Greek alpha, alphabet uh, variants. Unfortunately, the Greek alphabet has not been assigned to this variant. By the way, it's a variant of interest. It does have many of the features. I call it a bad player. The spike protein 
has features that that are that are seen in many of the uh, the other lineages that are associated with uh, some of the some of the features that we don't like is in increased infectivity or transmission, possible properties of immune escape. So it is it is one that everyone needs to keep an eye on. How does but, that but, work? What in layman's terms, wh what is that? Why? So there there are a couple of uh, feared characteristics of any variant. Number one is it does it is it spread more rapidly? And clearly that's the that's the feature that's that's the case with uh, with Delta. You know, it's being uh, it's being called almost as transmissible as chickenpox. It's unbelievable that the variant has mutated into a form now that is so rapidly transmissible. The second property that we're that's very, that is for which there has not been a a, a tremendous uh, uh, there's not there's some of these variants have have some evidence of, but not we haven't yet seen is that's a, a variant that has true immune escape for which the vaccines do not work. As was uh, stated by Mayor Geller, the vaccines uh, do work. Uh, they keep you sick. They keep you out of the hospital. They keep you uh, from dying. So yeah. vaccination is by far the number one message. Yeah, Dr. So Andrews, Dr. Yes. Andrews, if I may jump in here, um, it, it's pretty clear from what you have described. I mean, you enormously sophisticated operation you have over there and a whole team at the University of Miami Medical School, uh, you know, working on this. Talk to us about the application of what you are learning. For example, as Glenda mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Magoya was on this program about three or four weeks ago. He said last month we had two people in, in Jackson with the Delta variant. Now we have 49. So when you do the sequencing, how does that help the doctors, nurses at Jackson and other hospitals do their work? So the, right, right now the sequencing has um, has actually uh, because we know the that this that the Delta variant is so has such high uh, uh, transmissibility, uh, uh, extremely contagious. Uh, it it is it is increasing our vigilance to uh, both. Uh, Personal protection—that is uh, how how patients are are handled. Uh, how, we assume now that, by the way, that the vast that almost all cases now that are coming in are are the Delta variant. It's going to be we're going to what what we're what's being reflected nationally. We're going to see that now. Our our latest sequencing report will be coming out this week. And we're sure it's going to be in the 80 to 90 percent range. For practical purposes, though, for the management of the patient, for dealing with the illness, uh, it's it, it's being dealt with in the same manner as before. Despite this virus having some evidence of the Delta variant of being more severe, so on average, when it causes an infection, it may actually have a property of increased uh, degree, a degree of severity of illness. So that means, and you're talking about the Delta variant, or are you talking the Delta about variant, the Delta variant? The Delta variant, yes. So I want to just have you reiterate these variants that are morphing from the original are because why there are hosts for them so 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 okay it's a theme that we've heard before uh, all viruses mutate this virus has uh, as a, on an ongoing basis it there are mistakes made in the genome these mutations occur some of them are deleterious and that a strain does not emerge but when we have such high numbers of 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 infected individuals every once in a while a mutation occurs for which the virus has increased fitness. It's more robust. For one reason or another, it's stronger than a previous uh, form of the virus. A parental strain is how we're referring to the previous strains. And in this case, in Delta, unequivocally, what this, this strain has, it's basically its transmission rate. It's, it's on steroids. This thing has, uh, has, is now able to, so an they talk about R0 or R0 properties. Uh, it, the, if an individual is in a room with 10 other people and they're infected, uh, they are more, much more likely to transmit this virus mm. to others in the room. Yeah, well, well, terribly, terribly dangerous, Dr. David Andrews. We are grateful for you and your team there at the yeah. University of Miami. Thank you for the good work you are doing. And let's hope that we get everybody vaccinated and uh, do not fall prey to the Delta or any of the other variants. Thank you. Thanks very much.